Victor Lucido, Republican, out of Shelby Township. And uh, at that time, we were talking about the with a lot of things. We talked about the budget, state budget, and he called it kind of a game of chicken between you know the governor and the leadership in the state legislature. And now it's over, or is it? And in that game of chicken, who blinked or who swerved? Uh, let's talk about it today with the senator who's on the other end of our line. Good morning, sir. Welcome back. Hey, good morning, Dave and all listeners out there. Good to be back. So if it was a game of chicken, um, did the did the two trains smack head on and they both flew in the air? Did the car swerve at the last second? Did somebody blink? What do you, What's your assessment right now? Well, blinking and swerving and all those other great words are, are just words of terms of art, but the reality is, she was offered a sixty billion almost dollar budget, and she started cutting things that are disingenuous to the taxpayers of Michigan. Let's assume, Dave, that she just left everything alone except for right. transportation. Let's assume she just struck the line of almost four hundred extra million dollars in transportation and said, "I will not allow this to go through until we go back to the table." That offer was made by the leadership already and said. Let this budget go. Don't shut the state down. We will continue to open the door. The irony is, and, and, and I think the discord with what I see is, her frustration level was so bad, she started hacking schools, hacking public safety, hacking our county jails, hacking autism, hacking charter schools. For what reason? I would like to get an answer from the governor. What was your impetus of doing that? That had nothing to do with what was on the table about your roads. Well, she said she wanted to bring um, the leadership back to the table with some cuts. Is that yeah, how you cause... do it though, Dave? Well, Is I mean, I think you, you, you asked, and I mean, that was the reason that that the press were given that this was a tool to bring um, to bring the other side. But you know, not that she wanted these things gone necessarily. Some probably, well, but not all. Clearly. Well, wait a minute. When I, you know, if you're going to play with Barbies and get mad because of the fact that you didn't have the right hairstyle. This is disingenuous oh. to all the people. Why? Because she cut that budget with uh, those. We didn't. And she has to make it up to the people. We don't. Well, okay. Um, and the, I, if putting it up for a veto override, I would be real concerned that my own party, my own, as a, as the governor, her own party, her own Democrats, wouldn't push the veto override, make her look terrible. Well, so, okay, so let's, before we go down the road of a veto override, Let's talk about that nearly billion billion dollars. Should that be yeah. rebated to the people uh, of Michigan? Should it should it wait in limbo now for you know any number of quadrant meetings to happen? What it, should it, what it, should occur with that money? As, as as Republicans in in the majority in the House and the Senate, we can't even do that yet. And the reason why is the only uh, option or alternative is to put it up on the boards for veto overrides and see if we get two-thirds of the House and the Senate. Then it would go rebedded back to the people. So the people all that are listening this morning have to understand, we just can't say, oh, well, Governor, you made a big mistake here. You just cut autism and, and public safety. We're going to give it back to everybody. Hmm. No, Governor, you did this. Now we need two-thirds override to put a budget back together that you messed up bad. Hmm. Do you do you think a supplemental will happen in short order, or is this or is this going to be bumpy for a while? This might be over right now because here's the reality: you gave an indication that you wanted forty five cents a gallon. No one wanted to take it up from either side of the aisle, and to the point, nobody wants to pay it either out there because we've taken a pulse and everybody said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, no way." Therefore, we have to go cut around other uh, buckets, if you will, and yep. give the money to the roads. She got a budget and started hacking line items that didn't do anything to help the roads and, in fact, hurt the roads by taking away $400 million. You tell me why she did it other than uh, this is the way we're going to get people back to the table. Come on. This is ridiculous. How do the cuts affect your county right now? Uh, Huge. Pro- okay. I saw my sheriff last night. And my sheriff indicated to me, Pete, this will break us. I mean, what are we supposed to do when we can't pay our help? This is dollars that were allocated to county jails. We're the third largest county in the state of Michigan. Macomb County is third largest. And he said, Pete, we've got to get that money. 
And I said, well, call her up. Here, here's a phone number. Say, hello, Governor Whitmer. Uh, you know, we have a problem down here. How can you help us? I mean, you cut the budget. You have every right to do that. That's your executive power. But can you put it back in, please? Hmm. Well, I want to ask you, because our time is always short. Um, the no-fault law that went through. Then there were yeah. the protests here, caregivers. Yep. Now lawsuits uh, being filed. Do you have any second thoughts about that, the way you vote? And do you have any concerns about where that one breaks down uh, here in the days and weeks to come? In short, the legislature put the no-fault law on the books back in the 70s. And as a result, they have a right to modify, change, if you will, the law in the event that it's not either kept up with times or better yet, you can't afford it. As, as a result, we left the gate completely open saying that anyone in the Michigan Catastrophic Claims Association that is getting paid benefits will continue to get those benefits and they will be assessed ongoing for the 17,000 people that are in that, in that fund until they have been fully exhausted. In regards to moving forward, only those that are paying for unlimited will receive unlimited lifetime medical. As a result, I think the lawsuits are futile. I think the judges are going to see at the end that this is not going to happen because legislative process has been signed into law. You can't file lawsuits to say that the legislature got it wrong or that the governor, who is the executive branch, signed a law that is disingenuous. It's not going to happen. All right. And again, so, and, you know, for people saying, well, how do you know? Our guest here is also a lawyer, okay? And <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. Cause you've wait got, a minute, Dave. Let's be correct. The only lawyer. That's the right. Pardon me. In the, in the Senate, in you know, Senate. do you know what? On a, on a regular basis, we have the only lawyer in the state Senate on this show and the only lawyer in the White House press corps, John Decker, who comes on every other day uh, from the White House, which I think gives you guys a unique perspective. On this, well, what, you know what? It, it's interesting. If I knew, if I knew a little bit more about dairy farming, okay, maybe I'd be better proficient to see if how much milk is too much or how much milk <laughs> is not enough. So, Peter Lucido, state senator, the only attorney in the Michigan State Senate. Glad he corrected me on that. Uh, from Shelby Township, Macomb County, talking about the budget and auto no fault. Great to have you on. Have a great weekend. You too, Dave. Take care, right. listeners.